So we know how to deal with those exponents. We can handle the product rule and the quotient rule, combining them without having to write out all the terms. The thing we haven't looked at, though, is what if I have a negative exponent? So we can use the rule for dividing powers with like bases to lead us to a definition of that exponential notation when the exponent is negative. So we're going to take that division quotient rule, 5 to the 3rd, 5 to the 7th, and look at this example. We want to write out all the terms and see what it equates to. So I've got 3 factors of 5 up top and 7 down below. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, how can we simplify? What can we get rid of? How many factors of 5? So, I've got one up top, one below. One up top, one below. One up top, one below. So, where are the extra 5's existing now? Down below, so they need to stay there. So, how many factors of 5 do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4. And, what do I have up top? What's left? When I took 5 divided by 5, I got 1. Times 5 divided by 5, 1. Times 1. So we have that placeholder up top. We need it to tell us this is down in the denominator. It didn't magically move up top. So we can handle it in that way. And now let's use that rule for dividing exponential expressions. So if we look at the same exact example, 5 to the 3rd divided by 5 to the 7th. Using the quotient rule, what are we looking at? Same base, so we subtract 1 up top minus the 1 down below. So I've got 5 raised to what power? Negative 4. So which one is correct? Are they both correct? Everything is valid here. Everything is valid here from our rule. So what does that mean about these two? In reality, 5 to the negative 4 is the exact same as 1 over 5 to the positive 4th. So now we can finally deal with those negative exponents. If we have some base raised to a negative power, it's the same as having the reciprocal and positive power. So one thing that's special about these, a to the n and a to the negative n, those guys are reciprocals. What does it mean to be a reciprocal again? If we multiply them together, we get 1. So I'm taking one, flipping it upside down. So with our definition, we can prove that. This one has positive power, so we don't need to move him around. And again, how can I rewrite a raised to the negative n? So 1 over that entire factor, but now with a positive power. And straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So I've got a to the n over a to the n, which is 1. Prove that they're reciprocals. So whenever we have those negatives up top, we can put the entire factor down below, make it positive. So let's look at the pattern again that's happening here. We saw it with the 8s and we stopped at this point. We can write it concisely using that exponent notation. So I've got 5 is my base and I've got 4 factors all together. So 5 to the 4th. And now, as I divide by 5 again, taking out a factor, now I've got 3. If I divide by 5, I have 2. If I divide by 5, I have 1. If I divide by 5, I'm looking at actually 1, which is raised to the 0 power. So it's still the same pattern, but in this case, we're dividing by 5 every single time. And again, what's the pattern with the exponents over here? Exponents are decreasing by 1 every single time. So as we start to look at these fractions now, how can we represent them with that same base 5? What power is it raised to? So if I'm taking just following the pattern, 0 if I subtract 1, looking at a negative. Does that fit our definition? If it's negative up top, I can take the entire factor down below, make the exponent positive. So how can I rewrite this 25 down here? In terms of 5, it is 5 times 5. So we have 
negative 2 again. If we're just looking at the pattern, subtracting another 1. So I can rewrite it as 1 over 5 squared, which is 25. So you can always write out the patterns if you forget all the rules. Just write out a few examples. Notice the patterns as you're going. So when we're dealing with these exponents, we want to have positive exponents in the end. Once it's simplified, we shouldn't have any negative powers. So we want to work towards simplifying these and writing with positive exponents. So the first example, 4 raised to the negative 2. How can we write it with a positive exponent power? We look at the reciprocal. Make the power positive. And we can simplify that one. 4 times 4 is 16. So 4 raised to the negative 2 is equivalent to 1 16th. What about for part B? My base is negative 3. So if we want to make our power positive, we take the entire thing below and just make the power positive. Don't make the mistake of changing the base. The base is always the same. It's not going to change. And what do we get down here? Negative 3 times negative 3 gives us positive 9. All right, for the third one, again, base, we don't know what it is, but the power is negative, so we can look at the reciprocal and make our power positive, not the base, be careful. For the fourth one, part D, my negative one is attached to which variable? Only to B. So A can stay where he is, and where is B going to have to go? Down below to make it now positive. And if we have a negative down below for the power, concept is still the same. Where can I put them and make them positive? Up top, look at the reciprocal with a positive power now. And last, what isn't going to move? 3. It'll stay up top. And C raised to the fifth will be down below now. Take the reciprocal with a positive power. So go ahead and take the next four examples, simplify them if you can, write with positive exponents. So what are you looking at for the first? Again, the base is 4, we look at the reciprocal with a positive power. So 4 times 4 is 16, times another 4, 64. For the second one, again, look at the reciprocal with a positive power now. 5 squared is really 25. We're looking at? 125th. For part C, my base is negative 2 and my power is negative. So when I look at the reciprocal, my base isn't going to change, but my power is now going to be positive. And if I take negative 2 to the third power, we get negative 8. And last, again, negative base and negative power. When we look at the reciprocal, base isn't changing, but the power is going to be positive. So negative 5 times negative 5 gives us positive 25. So we're looking at 1 over 25. These are similar. All right. Last little part. Just to kind of sum it up, using all of these new rules together, we want to simplify these and write them with positive exponents. So the very first example deals with the product rule. We have the same base, and it's being multiplied. So what do we do with those powers? We add them. So I've got 7 raised to the third. And positive power, we don't have to take care of anything. We could do the math out, but it's fine. For the second one, again, same base, being multiplied, what happens with the exponents? We add them. So if I have 4 and I add a negative 3, I'm looking at 1. But is that simplified? Not necessarily. How do we want to report it? Just as x. Anything raised to the first is itself. For the third one, same base, and we have division. So we take the top exponent and we subtract the bottom exponent, which is negative. So I've got 5 raised to the 6th power. 
Another way that you could look at this problem is making all of the exponents positive first. The order doesn't really matter. So if we did that, 5 to the 4th. Down below it's negative, so I can put it up top, make it positive, and now it's a product rule case. Same base being multiplied, if we add the exponents together, did we get the same result? Yes. So if you're more comfortable making everything positive, all the exponents positive, in the first place, go for it. And the last one, same base being multiplied, so we add the exponents together. So I've got negative 4 and a negative 8 together will give me negative 12. Same story if we, well, in the end, we want to write it with a positive power. So what's it going to look like? 1 over y, 12. Or we could have started off in the beginning and said, how do I rewrite this term with a positive power? 1 over y to the 4th, and then multiplying by 1 over y to the 8th. Same base down below, multiply, so we add those powers. Still get the same result. So we always want to write those with positive exponents in the end. So I know it's a lot to remember, a lot of rules. So in the end, we just want to summarize all that's happened in this section. So if I have 1 as an exponent, a to the first, what does it simplify to? a. Anything raised to the first power is itself. And for an exponent of 0, when a is non-zero, what are we looking at? 1. How can we rewrite a raised to the negative n? with a positive exponent. We look at the reciprocal. Okay. Or we can look at the reverse. If I start off with this, how can I then put a to the n up top? We would make the power negative. Those two are exactly the same. Doesn't matter which one we start with. And for the product rule, same base being multiplied, what do we do with those exponents? Add them together. And if we have the same base and division, we subtract top and we take away the bottom.